Hi there and welcome. My name's Simon from CramleyExam.com and welcome to another English exam question walkthrough where I choose an English exam question, I tell you what the answers are and I explain why I think the answers are the answers and hopefully you'll be able to use my comments uh, and the exam tips that I'll give you to help you get ready and prepare uh, for your English exam. In this particular video, I'm going to have a look at the CAE Advanced Listening Part 2 Sentence Completion Exercise. So let's get started. Behind me, you'll, or behind me on the screen, you'll see the question that we're having a look at today. It's from engexam.info. Eng it's a fantastic website with plenty of resources to help you get ready for your CAE and other English exam so make sure you check it out lots of the materials I use uh, on this course are from engexam.info so we've got um, how many questions have we got it's eight questions um, from one listening text we got to fill in the sentences now before we go any further let's have a look at the rules now you might have seen this from my other videos that I've done on speaking and you'll definitely see it in other videos that I'll do on reading, use of English and writing as well. This is the Cambridge English Advanced Handbook for Teachers. So this is the handbook that we as teachers use to help uh, to teach or to help us pre uh, prepare you guys for your uh, English exam. Now this book is also useful for you because not only has it got plenty of exam uh, questions in it it's also got lots of hints and tips that perhaps your teacher hasn't told you or it might have the answers to the questions that you might have about the CAE so let's get straight down to the listening part which is on page 57 and part 2 sentence completion now there's a couple of things here that I just want to point out first of all there is one gap per sentence which is completed by a single word or sort, short phrase from the listening text. So you might think, how many words can I write in? Well, you can either write in one word or you can write in a short phrase. So you're limit, you're, there's no limitations here. Uh, generally speaking, I haven't seen an answer which is longer than three words. But that isn't to say that you can't write in a short phrase as long as that short phrase is in the listening because it says here the task focuses on the retrieval of specific information and stated opinions from the text so in other words what it's saying is is that if it was said in the listening it's it might be the answer but if it's not said in the listening it's not going to be your answer so it has to be in the listening the questions follow the order information presented in the text, which means that as the listening goes on, so do the questions. You're not jumping backwards and forwards, it goes in one direction. This is helpful if you've missed a question. For example, if you've done question one, question two, question three, you're listening out for question four, but then you realize that you've got to start filling in question five and six, you know that you've missed the listening bit for question number four. So the second time that you do the listening, make sure you pay more attention to that bit of the listening and the last piece of important information I want to take from here is this in sentence completion tasks tasks the words students must uh, write must complete the sentence logically and grammatically so your answer must grammatically and logically fit the sentence so if we go back to our question if we break this down we can see article adjectival this must be a noun. Here we've got article, adjective, this must be a noun. Here we've got an article, this is a noun, this must be an adjective of some kind. And so on, so on, so on. So before you do the listening, you're given some time to read through the question. And in the process of reading through, not only are you working out what the context is and what we're going to what the exam question is going to be about, you should also be you should also employ your word formation skills from the use of English to work out what kind of words going to come up. So if we have a look here, the word something, so this is a noun of some kind, an expert in what's called something is so this is a noun of some kind, a noun of a subject area, topic area. Panels on the tablet, tablets were once filled with, this is another noun, but it's a noun which is a material of some kind, um, which provided the writing surface. 
uh, efforts to analyze the original text using something photography. So here is our noun. What we need here is an adjective. New technology is also being applied to other histor historical texts which were written using noun. So it's a noun, but a, a noun which writes in some way. So you've already identified what we're looking for here or what we need to listen to in the listening. So we can then start to apply a little bit of common sense. The speaker says that an ancient Roman tablet was about as thick as a present day, so we've got to listen to some language of comparison, but something that exists now which didn't exist then. So what could this be? This could be, for example, a book, this could be a magazine, this could be something else, a little exercise book, a, jot, a notepad, something along those lines. At the site of an old something, archaeologists discovered about 200 tablets. So at the site of an old, was it some kind of building, some kind of structure, some kind of uh, landmark? What could this be? Uh, Roman soldiers often use tablets writing letter or documents of a something nature. So in other words, of a topic of some kind or of a subject of some kind. So we've got to think of what kind of reasons would the Romans have for writing to a subject? Would it for something important? Is it something that's business? Is it something that's commercial? Is it something like that? So we're thinking already what kind of nature, what kind of subject could it be? On one tablet mentioned, the word something is legible as well as people's names. Okay, so people's names are going to be mentioned or something about people's names. So this word is going to be mentioned in that same area. An expert in what called, so as I've already said, this is a, a subject or a topic or um, some kind of area of some kind. Panels on the tablets were once filled with something which provided the writing surface. So what can I write on and what could be poured? So what noun is this? You're beginning to think of what, what materials could this be that existed back then that could be melted perhaps, poured, and then it sets and then you write on it. What could that be? Efforts to analyze the original text using something photography. Uh, I know nothing about photography, so I've got no idea what this might be, but I know it's an objective of some kind. So I've got to make sure that I've got to listen to photography and that's something that didn't work. So, because it says here, unsuccessful. And also, uh, I've got uh, a noun with which I can write. So the obvious one is going to be ink here, because I think that in the past, they didn't have computers, typewriters, but they did have ink of some kind in which to write. So I'm going to assume there's a good chance that this is going to be ink. So by using um, a breakdown of grammar and structure and using our common sense, we're beginning to fill in the gaps already. Now, it takes practice, but you can do this really, really, really quickly. And of course, penciling in your answers is also a good thing to do. But don't fall into the trap of make of thinking that you're right before you do the listening. Be prepared to accept that your guess, however educated it might be, could be wrong, in which case you have to change your answer. So don't just think, I know what the answer is before, before I've done the listening. Be prepared to change your answer. These are just um, comments or notes to help us in our listening and in terms of the ideas that might be expressed, not the actual answers. So let's have a look at the answers. Before we have a look at the answers, there's something else to have a look at. And it is this. This is also found in the uh, handbook for teachers, and this is the answer paper for the listening question. Now, with only a few weeks, uh, or oh, I was going to talk about the course. If you don't know that I'm doing a course, then I'm doing a course. You can find the information on YouTube. But um, it's a good idea to write your answers or get used to writing in your answers on the actual answer sheet that you'll have in the exam. And there are a number of advantages to this. The main one being is that you know the instructions before you do the exam. And if you have a look here, you've got the instructions here for parts one, three, and four, and the instructions for part two. So it tells you exactly what you have to do. And you can practice this and it's worth practicing it because if you get it wrong, or if you do the exam and this is the first time you see this, you might make a simple error and it's going to cost you marks and the worst thing in the world is to lose marks just because you made an error because you haven't followed the instructions. So you, even writing in the answers is something that you can practice and I recommend that you do. But for part two it says here write your answers clearly in capital letters. Capital letters 
leave a box empty between words. So these are simple rules and I'm pretty sure that this is fairly intuitive, but people make mistakes and it's important to practice this. And if you get it wrong, it's better to get it wrong when you're practicing and you're getting ready for the exam, not in exam conditions. So you can print this out from the teacher's handbook. I'll leave a link to the teacher's handbook in the video description below. This is page 76. So you can print this out and you can do your answers. You can uh, on uh, for part two, you can do, I can't highlight this, but you can see it's above my head. You can do your answers in there. Do your answers, write in your answers in there. Okay, back to the question. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the answers and we'll find out why the answers are the answers. So let's do that. Here we go. So let's make sure we scroll back up to the top, part two, Roman tablets. Now the answers are envelope. Now I suggested magazine, book, something along those lines. Envelope wasn't too far away from that, was it? For number eight, it was Roman fort. It's marked it incorrectly, but I'll come back to that in a second. Number nine, a legal nature. So I said something to do with business, something to do with commerce, something to do with law. It's a legal nature. The word transportation, uh, an expert in what's called computer vision. Um, number 12, panels on the tablets were once filled with wax. I think most of you probably would have guessed that. Laser photography, I had no idea, but maybe you guys did. And number 14, ink. As I said, that was a fairly reasonable guess that it was going to be ink, but we had to listen for confirmation in the listening. So let's do that now. Um, the great thing about engexam.info, particularly for listening exercises, is that they identify where the answers come from. So this is great news for us. Was a uh, speaker says that an ancient Roman tablet was about as thick as a present day envelope. So here we go. Pieces of wood about the same size and thickness. So there's our language of comparison, our vocabulary links, because thick is mentioned in our answer, and it's mentioned here in the text, of a typical modern, which links to present day. And then we've got envelope. So question number seven is clearly envelope. Number eight talks about archaeologists discovering 200 tablets. Here we've got that vocabulary link here. Archaeological sites, nearly 200, 200 were found. And these founds were tablets. And of course, we meant, uh, 200 tablets are mentioned in the answer sentence. And here we've got Roman fort. Now, the reason why this is marked as incorrect by the website is because in the website, the answer was fort. But if you remember the teacher's handbook that we had to look at, which has got the rules in, it says a word or a short phrase. Now, given the specificity, there we go, specificity of the answer, I should edit that out, but I'm probably not going to. Uh, Roman fort, I think, is okay. I don't think we'll lose points by putting Roman fort in there because the Roman Roman is an adjective which belongs to the fort. So for me, that makes sense to have that there. So I don't think that this would be wrong. For number nine, uh, Roman soldiers often use tablets, writing letter or documents of a legal nature. And here we've got that exactly here. Uh, took the form of legal documents and letters, letters sorry, written by Roman soldiers. So plenty of vocabulary links there. One, one, on, one tablet man, on one tablet mentioned, the word transportation is legible as well as people's names. And here we've got that here. Bears the name of the person who wrote it and the person who received it plus the word transportation. So you've got to read past the sentence here as well because if you just say one uh, if you just read it on one tablet mention the word something so I go, I'm listening for a word and you don't read further then you miss the context and of course the context leads you into the answer people's names is mentioned here but it's mentioned before the word in the listening for number 11 uh, a leading figure in what's known as computer vision a leading figure is our expert the project is very challenging, links to the hardest project he's ever worked on. Plenty of vocab links there. Panels on the tablets were once filled with wax. Wax were poured into these, these being tablets. 
Number 13, uh, for some time scientists have attempted to study them using laser photography, but this has proved fruitless. So here we've got the same structure as in our answer. Laser photography, proved fruitless, means unsuccessful. Uh, attempts to study them is analyze the original text. So even the structures are the same here. And lastly, for number 14, the new technology has already been used on texts in ink as well. We were listening for that. It was no surprise when we heard ink, and of course, we write that in, and it's correct. And there we go. That's why I think the answers are the answers. If you have got any comments at all about this exercise, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, then please leave a comment below. And also, pay attention to what I said about how to prepare for this question, the processes you should go through, before you answer this question and of course practicing on the answer sheet as well because the more preparation you do before the exam the more the higher chances you will have of getting a better mark in the exam okie dokie i will see you soon in another video so see you later